Hey, what's going on everybody? This is the Marvelous One with your raw review for April 14th, 2014. Hailing from Birmingham, Alabama. And what was nice at the beginning of the show, they did a nice Ultimate Warrior tribute where they told the bell ten times and, and throughout the night they showed different highlights of his career. It, it was nice to see the ones that you normally had seen like like Warrior won the IC title at SummerSlam 88 off the Honky Tonk Man and him winning in the Ultimate Challenge against Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 6. Then he showed that from SummerSlam, I believe it was, was either 89 or 90, what, I believe it was 1991, Ultimate Warrior, defeat, he defeated Ravishing Rick Rude in a steel cage. It, it would have been nice to see more of his highlights. And of course, they did show the him talking for the last time on, on last week's Raw. Would have been nice to see some of his other highlights. Maybe when he came down to make the save at WrestleMania 8 on when Hogan wrestled Sid Justice and some of that other stuff. Maybe they could have showed his return at, at WrestleMania 12 in 1996 when he beat Triple H in about three minutes or two minutes or something like that. I forget how long it was. But, but all in all, it was a really nice video package that they had and, some of the, and a lot of the highlights were good as well. Oh, well, he started doing a number one contender for the IC title tournament. You got eight different competitors in this tournament. You got four matches this week, and then the semifinals are next week. And then the winner of the tournament goes on to take on Big E at Extreme Rules for the IC title. First match was RBD against ADR. Yes, I've seen this before. Like last fall when they were fighting over the World Heavyweight Championship. I wouldn't have been surprised if R that RVD won this match except for the fact that ADR has beaten Big E the last couple times on Monday Night Raw, so I didn't really get this. But it is no job Rob after all, and he's just coming back for the co to the company, so so I guess that's why they're ha having him go over here. And and you're not going to bring back an RVD to, to not be somewhat of a player, so... Otherwise, I don't really have a problem with him winning. So then he had a tag team match between the Brotherhood of Cody Rhodes and Goldust against Ryback. Baxel. I guess you got to have the heel team go over here because the Usos are going to have to have number one challengers at some point. But I still don't understand why they didn't have Cody Rhodes and Goldust have a match at WrestleMania. Unless they're going to do it some sometime later on in the year. but Maybe at a SummerSlam or something because... I, I would think so, something like that should be at a big four pay-per-view, so. All right, that, then you got the new Divas Champion Page taking on Alicia Fox. I'm surprised that, as far as that AJ Lee didn't invoke a rematch clause, but I guess she's going to be gone for a while, I guess. So, so, but as far as this match goes, you got, you got to see some more of, of Page's moveset, and the Instead of winning with the Paige Turner, she did her little submission move called the Scorpion Crosslock. I'd never seen this before until until NXT arrival when she when she took on Emma for the NXT Women's Title, and that's God. I wouldn't want to get caught in that move. That's that looks pretty painful. So you, you got to make Paige look strong, and and she basically did. Okay, and then you had a rematch of from last week as the Usos against Randy Orton and Batista, but before that you had a backstage segment with with the Authority talk, talking to Orton and Batista saying that, hey, if the Shield's going to come after me, they're going to they're gonna come after you guys. And and Orton and Batista, they're, they're not even worried about the Shield. They're more worried about going after Danny Bryan and the World, WWE World Heavyweight title, but... As far as the match, match goes, Usos were DQ'd after said Shield attacked Randy Orton and Batista. And then, then afterwards, they're coming back to the backstage area and, and Triple H is saying, told you. <laughs> so it, it's kind of good. It, it just kind of set up what, what would happen later on in the night. So it was pretty good, I thought. All right, then you got Paul Heyman coming out there and... Before he brings out Cesaro, he talks about Brock Lesnar. And he he's bragging once again about Lesnar beating the streak. 
and and that you know, that and that's just asking for major heel heat. And if anybody knows how to get that in WWE, it's Paul Heyman. He knows how to get heat on himself, probably better than most anybody that's ever wrestled in WWE or been a manager or whatever. But 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 it, it's uh it's the second of the four matches in the IC title tournament. Uh, Mark Henry against Cesaro. It's kind of nice that they're having Cesaro not come out there with any music. You're, you you want to make the guy as different as possible. I don't really know how this ma is making Cesaro babyface or not, but unless they're unless they're going in a different way than what than the, from the reaction that he got at WrestleMania for for winning the Andre the Giant Battle Royal and and eliminating Big Show and then and, and all that good stuff, but. Cesaro gets Mark Henry up in the neutralizer and he advances. So next you got Alexander Rusev out there against Xavier Woods and this is nothing more than a, than a squash. R-Truth tries to get in a couple shots after the match and, and what do you know he gets squashed too. Time will time will only tell if he's going to be the next if he's going to be Vladimir Kozlov 2.0 if they're or if they're actually going to make something out of Rusev. I kind of like this Ivan Drago thing with him and Lana, so hopefully they do something with Rusev. That that would be very nice. Okay, and then the the third match in the IC title tournament, it's Sheamus against Jack Flagger, and you didn't really think Jack Flagger was going to go over in this, now did you? <laughs> I hope not, because he didn't. Because Sheamus goes over with the bro kick, and why? Because it, because he's Sheamus is a member of the Breakfast Club, and Breakfast and the Breakfast Club rules, bitches. That's all. My one gripe about Damian Sandow is did did he piss in somebody's Cheerios or something? Because God, he he's just getting squashed left and right, and I don't understand this. I, I get, I guess this is what happens when you cash in your money in the bank and lose to John Cena, and then. It's a, just part of the John Cena experience where you fight John Cena, you lose, and then you get pushed to the very bottom. You get squashed. Kind of like what happened here when Big Show came out there and Cena was just talking for a little bit, and he finally he finally just gets under Big Show's skin, and he, what do you know? He gets knocked out. Wow. How far has Damien Sandow fallen? Then you got Bray Wyatt coming out there for a promo, and he's talking about how he's never lied to the WWE Universe, but, well, but Cena has. And what do you know, Cena comes out there, and if you know anything about John Cena, you know he's, he's going to have some corny jokes and all this bullshit, but you got to remember who his target audience is. His target audience isn't guys like me who are, who are in their mid-40s, his target audience is chicks and kids under the age of 16. So he talks about corny jokes and that that the that those kids will relate to. So, so we all, you see these Photoshop photos of of other members of the Wyatt family, if you will. But but then Cena gets serious and he challenges Bray Wyatt to be by himself and not have any Wyatt family interference. So challenges him to a steel cage match at Extreme Rules. So. So if nothing else, we're getting another match for Extreme Rules getting set up, and you know, even maybe since Bray Wyatt didn't run, didn't go over at WrestleMania, maybe he should go over here, perhaps. That that would really legitimize him. But it would have done a hell of a lot more better if if you would have legitimized Bray Wyatt and have him run win at WrestleMania. So. Really, in theory, you should, they shouldn't have another match because because Cena's already gone over on Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. So, why would you have another match? But probably what's going to happen is that they'll probably have Bray Wyatt go over here, maybe, and then they'll have a th maybe a, another third match at Judgment Day or something. Maybe it would be an I Quit match. I don't know. Okay, then you had a, a mixed tag team match between. Emma and Santino against Fandango and his new tag team partner, or dance partner, Layla. Well, after seeing Emma wrestle in, in NXT, it's kind of a, it's almost kind of a shame that they're 
sticking her San with Santino, it's making her really look like a joke when I've when I, when I've seen Emma wrestle in NXT and and the way she wrestles, she's not a joke, but but since she's getting stuck with Santino, that's probably what's that's what's happening to her. And they're making her look like a joke. So then you got Stephanie back there with Kane and He's trying to apologize for not being able to take care of Daniel Bryan, who's obviously not not there this week because he's on his honeymoon with Brie Bella. But he, Kane's trying to apologize, and Stuff's having none of it. And there, I, I've said this before, and I will say it again: there ain't a sexier woman on earth than Stephanie McMahon when, when she's mad. I'm just throwing that out there. But but it looks like but and Kane says he's gonna. Eviscerate Daniel Bryan and take him to the depths of hell. So I, and he he's reaching for the mask. It, it just happened to be sitting back there. So I'm guessing he's putting it back on for next week. So well, I guess it'll be interesting to see where it goes from there, but not really. Okay, so you got the final of the four first round match in the number one contendership to the IC title tournament. Um, it's Bad News Barrett against Dolph Ziggler and. Which is actually the best match out of the four. Actually, got a little more time than the other ones, but hopefully this time maybe I'm not gonna hold my breath on this, but hopefully now they'll perhaps do something with Bad News Barrett. I mean, he's only been with the company all going on four years now, and you would have thought he would have been a major player before now, but and like I said, I'm not gonna hold my breath on this, but. But stranger things have happened before, and hopefully maybe they'll do something with him this time. That would be great. Alright, so then your main event, what we thought was going to be a six-man tag with the Shield, uh, not so much. It turns on to more like an 11-on-3. Uh, it's the Shield against ADR, Fandango, Swagger. Yes, 3MB is in a Monday night main event spot. Uh, Titles and Neil is in this. Right back, so Rusev and ba Barrett comes back out. Yeah, Shield was kind of holding their own for a little while. Rollins did some nice leap to the outside and took everybody out, and then then they get back into the ring and they're standing tall, and then they get attacked all again, and and then you hear old familiar music. Evolution is a mystery. You, you hear the familiar tones of Motorhead. And you hear the music for Evolution. Evolution is back, bitches. Uh, three members of the Breakfast Club. Randall Keith Orton, Dave Batista, and Jubilee Chug. But, oh, well, they come down, they, they come sauntering down the ring, and and they get it, and they, Triple H calls for everybody to leave. Hey, oh, well, you know, because they've done their job. Now, now, they take, now, now the heavy hitters can take over, and 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 they pretty much lay waste to the shield at, in that and it's just like you know this is good I, I I pretty much marked out when I heard the evolution music so I guess the only thing now is hey hey can Ric Flair come back and mentor this group but but anyway if you're thinking they at the shield is getting buried here it's like no they, no, they are not getting buried. In, instead, it's quite the opposite. They're getting elevated. If if Triple H and Orton and Batista are taking going after the Shield, that means they're that means they have to think that the Shield is on their level and they're worth taking out. So, what you the, I'm guessing this will probably be, if not the main event of Extreme Rules, but it could be like this the semi main event or the co main event, whatever. But but this is, is, is this can only help the shield, and and another thing, it keeps R Randy Orton and Dave Batista away from R Daniel Bryan for a while, so Daniel Bryan can feud to somebody else. So I I like this. This this is this should be really good. Okay, as to what I thought of this show, it was a, it was an okay show. It wasn't a great show by any means, but it wasn't terrible or anything. Um. Really stoked to see Evolution and take on the Shield at Extreme Rules. That should be one of the highlights for me as far as one of the matches I'm really looking forward to. Um, 
And then Cena against Bray Wyatt in a cage. Hopefully they have Bray Wyatt go over here, but since he didn't go over WrestleMania, I'm not going to hold my breath on that. Just because it's John Cena and and WWE seems to think that he needs to win every freaking match at a pay-per-view. Even though I know he has lost at pay-per-views before, but not, but not at the big ones. And as far as the IC title tournament, your semi-final matches, Bad News Barrett against Sheamus and Cesaro against RBD. Um, I would have to think it's going to be Cesaro against Sheamus in the, like in the finals, unless they want to go for Barrett against RBD. I, but I got a feeling that Cesaro's got to be in there somewhere because they're. Because I think Cesaro needs to be pushed to the moon, and he and he should be. But and then they once and then once again they had a couple of vignettes on Bo Dallas, and they had Adam Rose vignettes. I'm I'm really excited to see Adam Rose on the main roster. Bo Dallas not so much because I'm not a Bo Weaver. But anyway, I am Marvelous Mark, and I will see y'all later. Okay, one no notice about this channel. Um, I start a new job on on Tuesday morning, so next week's Raw review probably won't be up till like Wednesday, probably like Wednesday afternoon, maybe. Then, as far as my NXT reviews, hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll have it sometime up on Friday. I'm hoping, but I'm gonna be working early mornings f for the foreseeable future, so. So my so my raw reviews and my NXT reviews will probably be later than they normally would be, and and I haven't been doing Impact reviews lately just because I don't have Spike TV anymore, and so I I either have to watch a stream of it or I'll have to watch it on the Spike TV website or something. So so if you're wondering why I'm not doing Impact reviews, that's that's probably as good a reason as as I can tell you. But other than that, that's about all I know, and I'll talk to you all later. Again.